Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Matthew. I wanted to take a few minutes to unpack the Sunday readings. Let's get started. The first reading comes from Ezekiel, an Old Testament prophet whose target audience are those that are experiencing exile. They're experiencing a lot of pain, probably anger, remorse. Uh, and we see Ezekiel reminding the people that our idea of fairness is not always the same idea that God has of what fair or justice is. And it can be difficult. Uh, we think about all the times that we are angry, remorseful, um, sad, lonely, and we ponder about why we feel these things and why these things are happening to us. And Ezekiel is there to remind not only the people, but also us today, that we can't think like ourselves. We have to think like God. And how do we think like God? We have to attune our hearts to the will of God. Obviously, better, easier said than done. But Ezekiel is there to remind us that fairness and equity and justice, those are things that come from God when they're true and when they're just, right? And when they are good and oriented toward God. But when we think selfishly, when we think of our own self-interests, when we put ourselves in front of others, then our idea of fairness really isn't all that fair. And whenever we experience God's fairness, that's when we have to remind ourselves to be humble and not be prideful, to put others in front instead of putting ourselves up in front. And as we look at the Psalms, the second reading, and especially Christ and the Gospels that we're about to, um, it's a lot harder than we always want it to be. The Psalms now have the perfect lead up into the second reading. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. And Paul to the Philippians gives us the perfect example in Jesus Christ as he talks about the uh, extreme humility that Jesus had to embody and empower by coming down so far to be able to be with us in many respects we see as a great gift, um, one that is absolutely undeserved, but it, one that is given to us um, in the incarnation, uh, a beautiful, beautiful gift uh, that God has given us. One, in many respects, we would consider unfair, right? Um, but for God, it is fair in the way that he loves. And that is how Jesus is going to explain to us in the Gospels what love truly is. He loves to use uh, familial language. He loves to use familial parables, especially um, bringing it uh, real to the people in their modern day in life. But for us, especially to how Paul is talking to the Philippians. It's an understanding of the radical love of who the person of Jesus is, somebody that dons humility um, in a way that is very difficult for us, that a lot of times we can't comprehend or understand, um, and maybe we never will, but it's still the ideal. It's still the example set before us, and thankfully we do have that incarnate example in the person of Jesus. So now we arrive at the Gospels, and really and simply, um, Jesus gives us this parable of when a father asks his two sons to do something, and one son says he will, and then he doesn't, and the other son says he won't, and then he does. And really, he pits, once again, sinners and Pharisees against each other, and not in a way that is combative, argumentative, or saying that one is right and one is wrong, really there is, but that the Pharisees were, are so close. They follow the law, but they haven't internalized the love that the law is supposed to bring about, right? So with the sinners, he says, it's their actions when they repent and they turn toward God and they live out a life of repentance and away from their sin. That is what Jesus is calling us toward, not to live a life of some of the Pharisees who were proclaiming the law, yet doing nothing about it in their daily life. Just like the son that might have said no to the father, but then goes and does his will anyway. That's what we're called to do. Our actions speak louder than words. And that doesn't minimize the words that we should be using. But we also have to know that we have to live that out in one way or the other. And we have to help each other live it out. 
Thanks so much for joining me. You can check down in the description for more resources and links to all the things that we're doing here at St. Edward's Catholic Church. If I don't see you Sunday, I'll see you soon.